Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Kenny Vaughn. He's going to talk about the greatness of Jerry Garcia. I think that was his peak uh, as a player, you know, his, his, his facility at that time was just magnificent. 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, right in there, yeah. All those, those it was just, I was just listening to something um, the other day that was uh, from a European tour, I think it was the 72 tour, where they took like 50 people to Europe, and, and, uh, and they all had, they, they, they were still had that, that acid, you know, everybody's dosed all the time, you know. But man, he play, there's a couple of things in there where he comes on strong and really starts getting it, you know. It's like, wow, Jerry, you know. Things will go along for a while, and you know, it's not very exciting, and all of a sudden those guys will catch on fire, and it's like, whoa, what just happened, you know? It's so good. Well, I don't know, you know, I mean, he was, uh, he was well developed when, uh, by, you know, 1968, he was really quite good. And he, I, I know he practiced a lot. And um, I've read a lot about those guys. I saw him a lot in the, you know, 68 and 69, and. 70, but um, when it was still Pigpen, you know, the real Grateful Dead. And um, uh, everybody said that when he would arrive at the venue in the afternoon, he would get his guitar out and he wouldn't stop playing until the, after the show. He just played all the time. And there's this footage of the first time they went to England. Have you seen that? It's on YouTube. It's their very first time and they get off, it gets, shows them getting off the plane and walking down the tarmac, or down the um, hallway at Heathrow. <laughs> and they're clearly um, altered, in an altered state. <laughs> and it's really funny, you know, and they go to this record company cocktail party. And, uh, and then uh, it lay, there's some other footage of the, of the gig that they went to that, to play. It's like an outdoor festival. And it's it's hilarious because, you know, they're high, <laughs> and and there's this one uh, little bit where um, uh, Mickey Hart and Jerry are in a little trailer behind the stage, you know, and they're being interviewed by this British lady, and Jerry you know, is pl playing his guitar, you know that he's gonna play is this Gibson SG guitar and he just keeps playing, you know. And Mickey's sitting down and he's like got a guitar in his lap and he's to totally not making any sense, you know, but he's having fun. And then Jerry starts talking about, well, you know, you know, there's a thing about operating when you're when you're high, you know, meaning on L S D or mushrooms. And um, and he's talking about, you know, hey, you gotta it's a different thing, you know, it's a but the whole time he's playing, you know, he never stops. You know, there's a band on stage you can hear kind of in the background, you know. And, but he's just like, and he says some really great stuff, man. It's really cool. It's like, you know, it's sort of stream of consciousness kind of answers to the questions, you know. Yeah. And he's, he's, you know, he's attempting to, you know, engage. But he's, he says some really cool stuff. It's really good. That's great footage. You can find it on YouTube. I think the, I think it was 1970. They just went over for that was the first time they ever went, and then they came back to do the real tour in '72. I think was when they had that big tour, and took 50 people. Can you imagine, yeah. wives and kids, and you know, every time I saw them, there was like, people. You know, they had the amps. You know, you know, and the drums in front of the amps, and the, you know, quite a few amps up there. You know, and uh, there was always, you know, at least, you know, eight to, or to 15 people, you know, standing back there, leaning on the amps, watching them, you know, hanging out that, you know, you didn't know what their jobs were, you know, you never, I'm sure some of them were working, you know, and some of them were just there to, who knows why they were there, yeah. part of the entourage, you know. He had some kind of wah-wah pedal and some kind of fuzz pedal or something. I don't know, man. I've never really got a... I, I met that Steve Parrish guy and I, one time, his roadie, his, the guy that was his manager and roadie all, through all that, you know, for the, his whole career. And I didn't really get a chance to 
zero in on that. I'd love to talk to him about it because I, I was always curious about, first of all, I know that they rebuilt those twin reverbs that he played through. And I've always tried to figure out what they did, you know? <laughs> and he, I said, what did they do to Steve? You know, he said, well, you'd have to contact so-and-so, you know, to, to ask him about that, you know? But I remember reading one time one of those guys talking about that they opened up the circuit. And I'm like, what does that mean? You know, and I've asked people over the years, and I've never really got down to it because it sounded so fucking good, man. I mean, that tone of the, you know, he was playing through twin heads, right? He had two twins, and then there were two four by 12 cabinets underneath those twins. So there, and each one had um, four JBL speakers, I think. That's what, I think that's what it was. I know they were JBL speakers, but I think they were four by twelves. And so he was, he had two twins and four, and four, you know, eight JBLs, you know, twelve-inch speakers. And he got a great tone. I don't really know what the deal with those amps were. They did something to him. Yeah. I think they removed something out of the circuit and opened it up. You know, whatever that means. He was a brilliant person, you know, in every way. He had his problems, you know, but he was brilliant. I, I, I always liked his interviews because he always said cool stuff, you know. He was very honest, you know, in his music and his, the way he lived his life, I think. He, you know, he had some drug problems, I think, you know, some heroin. I don't think he particularly liked being in the position he was in, you know, he couldn't afford to quit the band, and there wasn't much he could do to change the situation, you know. And he had, you know, three wives and kids and child support and all that stuff. So, what was he gonna do? You know, but, you know I I like all the stuff he did, you know, the other stuff he did, you know, David Grisman and the Jerry Garcia band and all that stuff. So good, you know, the Grateful Dead. Are, it's a not, that's not for everybody, but obviously it was for a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people liked them. Yeah. When I used to see them, it was never more than, you know, I, I'm sure that there was never more than 500 people there at the gigs I saw. Wow. Yeah. Maybe 700 at, a, at the last two, but it wasn't packed, you know, and it wasn't a big venue. It was like a medium size. Yeah. That had to be great, man. Oh! the best. It was fantastic. But you know, it wasn't for everybody because, you know, they're terribly inconsistent. You know, you could go to three shows and they'd be terrible, but go to one and all of a sudden it's like the greatest thing you ever heard. If you'd like to hear more of Kenny Vaughn telling stories, click this playlist and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.